look at how a page is laid out in Xamarin.Forms. Looking at the app.cs file in our sample out-of-the-box project, we can see that a, a form or page is created for us called main page, and this is of a page type called content page. And we'll see in a few minutes there are various types of pages. Within a page is a layout. This is a container that will contain other objects, and there are also various types of layouts available to us in Xamarin Forms. And then within the layout, there are views. You can think of these as our controls that we saw in, in uh, Windows Forms. And there's a number of views that are common, or controls that are common across all platforms uh, that we're designing for, including iOS, Android, and Windows. Well, let's take a look at the pages. So the first type of page is a content page. This contains a single content item, but that item is often another layout container that can contain several different views or several different controls. There's also a tabbed page. The tab page presents a tab bar with a certain number of tabs that we can specify and allow the user to navigate between a stack of pages using those tabs. The tab bar is at the top in an Android device and at the bottom on an iOS device. The master detail page provides a menu of items which allows the user to navigate to detail pages for each of those items. On many phone devices, the menu will slide in from the left and hide when we go to select a detail. But on a larger screen like a tablet or a large phone, you would see both panes at the same time. And the menu pane would not necessarily disappear. Then we have a navigation page. The navigation page provides a navigational control of a stack of pages. It has a bar at the top with the page title and a previous button to be able to backtrack through the pages that have been navigated through. The carousel page allows you to present items one at a time in a carousel or circular Rolodex format that the user can swipe to go forward or backwards. Usually within a page, we're going to use a layout that allows us to have additional uh, views or additional controls. And a layout really is a view. It's a view that simply is a container. And we have four types of layouts that can contain multiple children. The first one is a stack layout. And this was the one we saw in the sample program. The stack layout simply allows us to stack objects on top of one another or side by side if we choose a horizontal orientation. And we can choose to center those, start those at the top, or have them at the very bottom. So in a horizontal rotation, we might use that for a rotated view, where we're looking at a landscape view. We want those objects to simply go left to right. Absolute layouts are used to place views at specific positions. And we can use anchors and bounds to control the size and the position of those views. They can be placed proportionally within the layout using values for x and y between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. So if one's something centered, it would be an x of 0.5 and a y of 0.5. And the items can also be placed using device-dependent uh, units as coordinates. Then we have relative layouts. In a relative layout, we use constraints to place views relative to one another or to page margins and references. This is very similar to working with storyboards in Xcode on the iOS side. And then our fourth layout for multiple children is a grid layout. Working within sort of a table type layout, we can specify rows and columns. And items can span multiple rows or span multiple columns. The height of rows and the width of columns can be specified or they can be relative. And then we have layouts that contain just a single view, a single child. The most common of these is a scroll view. So a scroll view adds scroll properties, but that single content view might be something like a stack layout. And that st stack layout then could contain multiple objects, multiple views. Scroll views are also often used for text 
where we have a large body of text, but it doesn't all show up on the screen at one time. We can place that text object in a scroll view. The content view allows us to place one object. That object might be centered, it might be at the top, it might be at the bottom. We can specify that with properties. And then finally, the frame is similar to the content view. It only displays one item, but it will add a color bordered frame around it. And we can also apply a drop shadow to it. Those are based on two properties that we can set within the frame object. Within those layouts, we can include all kinds of controls or views. We have views for presenting information, such as a label or an image, or maybe a web view if you want to have HTML code that's being displayed. A box view is really just a placeholder. It's a, it's a, it's a graphic box, and we specify a color of it, but normally we use that maybe in a layout where we're waiting on a graphic designer to provide an image, so we use it just as a placeholder. And then we have views that trigger some type of action, the most common of which is a button, but we also have a search bar. We can search a page for a word or phrase. We can also gather input from, from users with other views, such as a date picker or a time picker. An editor is a multi-line, in essence, text box, while an entry is a single-line text box for getting information from the user. We can use a slider to allow the user to pick between two numbers, a stepper to increase or decrease the number, and a switch to specify a Boolean value as being either true or false or on off. There are activity indicator views that we can utilize. The activity indicator gives us that familiar little circle showing there's something in progress, or we can do a linear progress bar. And then finally, we have some views for working with collections a list view and a table view. And the picker then is used to select items, say, out of a list view. List views you'll see all the time in terms of a list of items, maybe a list of videos on a uh, app that's allowing you to specify a video to view, or in, a, in an inbox where we're seeing the mail that's in our inbox, each item being specified as an, an object in that list view. For more information on all these different views, I recommend you go to the Xamarin website, go into the developer area, and there is a guides tab. And in that guides tab, you can find all kinds of information, but there's one here on just views, as well as one on pages and layouts. And you can review that information for each of these different uh, views. Also within the developer page of Xamarin, there is a samples page. And I would recommend you just to go to the samples page and download the forms gallery. This was created by Charles Petzold, our textbook author. Download it into, into Xamarin Studio or Visual Studio and run it, testing it on an emulator. So here I have a, an Android emulator running with it. And what it does, it presents all the different views and you can click one of those items and see what that item would look like. So I can click on the box view and see a page displaying a box view. Now there's a couple here that do not work in the emulator such as the web view and the map. So we've talked about pages, layouts, and views. There's one more control here that we haven't talked about and that is a cell. A cell is a body of information that appears in a table view or a list view and we can format cells to display the information as we would wish. There are four types of cells available to us in Xamarin.Forms. The first is a text cell that displays text information. An image cell is like a text cell, but can have an image embedded with it, usually a thumbnail. The entry cell allows a user to enter some text. And then finally, the switch cell allows the user to select a Boolean value uh, using a switch uh, being on or off. We can also create our own cell types or extend these. So again, I encourage you to go into the forms gallery in Xamarin Studio or Visual Studio. Look at the different uh, classes there. Each page is based on a different class. So if you want to look at how a slider is coded, you can go to the slide demo page.cs and look at the code there. This also becomes a great reference tool for you in coding these different objects.